Robin Slim Show. Hello. Hi. Who's calling? Hey, is this Rob? Yes, this is. Hey, man, Xander, how you doing? Good. How you doing, Xander? Hey, what's up, Xander? Good this good. is what's up, Xander? This is Slim, and we are uh, live right now. Oh, okay. Great. Now your, your CD is called uh, what is it? Guitar, Guitar Cadia. Guitar Cadia. Yeah, the name of my album. Correct. It's awesome, dude. Um. I, Thanks, man. I, I, you're welcome. I wanted to ask you. I'm um, in the, um, but you you just do guitar, right? Um, I on the album I do guitar and I played uh, bass on one song, but then I had session musicians come in and do all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because I was going to ask you who did the vocals on the um, Don Henley song uh, "Boys of Summer" because I love that remake, and I didn't know oh, who you had. Man. That's a friend of mine. His name is Mike Shulo, and he is uh, long since retired from the music world. He is a family man now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is so OCD is great. Um, now, uh, where, uh, who have you performed with, with other musicians a lot? Yeah, uh, I'm in a, I always keep myself in a couple of different projects going on because uh, for me, it's just, it's kind of healthy. You know what I mean? It's, it's healthy to, you know, kind of expand on stuff. For example, tonight, I apologize for calling a little bit late. We had, uh, we had a band practice for one of the bands I'm in, and we ran a little bit over because originally it was a tryout night tonight, but the two people that were trying out worked out so well that we just kept going on some songs and we just ran a little bit over. Oh, um, that's cool. And, uh, that, that band's called Raised on Radio, and it is a, a journey tribute act with, you know, like a bunch of, like, um, uh, I guess you could say arena rock medleys. Like we do like a Boston medley and a, a Billy Idol medley, a Queen medley, a Styx medley. But then we play about like 12 Journey tunes. And, cool. Uh, we just, we, we were trying out two new people tonight, a, a female vocalist. And, I'm sorry, a female uh, uh, keyboard player who, who does lead vocals and a new drummer. And man, they just, they just slayed it. Cool. So we, everything was kind of in the pocket, really in the zone. And, um, uh, so it was a good night, and then tomorrow I got my solo band uh, rehearsal for the Tony McAlpine show on Monday at the Hard Rock Cafe in Pittsburgh. So got a busy week this week. So how many bands are you in right now, then? Uh, officially, I'm in two. The, the, I was in a progressive metal band called Dracus Prime, but we were um, we're right now we're on hiatus because our drummer broke his ankle, uh. and. Um, he, he had a really bad break, so... Uh, well, he doesn't need an uh, ankle to drum. Yeah, you do, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you do. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. I don't know anything about does drums. He, does he play the... Uh, does he use a double bass, or does he use just the uh, single uh, single bass drum pedal? No, no, he's, he's a double bass player. I mean, for progress, I mean, he's very much like in the Dream Theater, and that's what a lot of our original stuff sounded like. Um, that's pretty cool. But so, so we're taking a little bit of a break right now uh, with that band. Yeah, you kind of have like an '80s. Like a couple of people asked me, like what your sound was like. It's kind of like an '80s uh, metal sound. I like it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it, it is kind of a metal uh, '80s metal sound. Um, just there's a little bit. There's some hints of some modern stuff in there, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like some. There, there's a, there's an element of uh, you know of, of like a modern uh, modern sound in there. Mm, definitely. So, what are your uh, favorite bands? Like, what influenced you and stuff like that? I mean, I guess throughout the years, I mean, I have to say that Journey is probably my all-time favorite. Um, but uh, Dream Theater, they, they're they a pretty close second. Um, I'm still a huge fan of Whitesnake after all these years. Uh, uh, big fan of Racer X. Um, and, and then some, you know, and then a lot, a lot of the bands, you know, like from the power metal, you know, area like uh, Fair Warning and Stradivarius and Sonata Arctica. Uh, a lot of foreign bands like that. I mean, I, I love a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's just, you know, Nightwish is one of my favorites. They're great. Um, and then, you know, from from the 80s, though, I mean, I still like some of the hair metal stuff. I like White Lion. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Boston. You know, not hair metal, yeah. but they're real. Um, you know, so, I mean, they, they kind of go all over the place. I mean, if they have, like, a catchy guitar solo, then that was really pretty much what attracted me to the band, you know. Yeah. Now it said you were in a movie. Also, uh, what was that called? Hair, uh, hair, hair. I go again. Uh, yeah. I'm actually I'm doing the uh, movie score for that, and I, and I, I was interviewed for it too. Wow. Like I have a I have a small interview in it, so that was a really cool. Uh, it's a cool experience. A friend of mine's making it, and um, uh, it's still in process right now. Okay. Is it about uh, hair bands? I, I take it. 
Yeah, it is, yeah, because that's, we all, it, coincidentally, uh, the guy that's doing the movie, Kyle Kruger, him and the guitar player were in a band, um, there were a bunch of bands in, in, uh, in the west coast of Florida where we all grew up together, and I was a little bit younger than they were, so I wasn't quite in the band scene yet. But they were, um, they, they kind of got back together to do, you know, sort of like a, uh, you know, kind of a tribute to it. But it, as it turned out, it's it, it's now more along the lines of saying, hey, we want to get out and just do one last gig before we get, you know, before we get too old. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Do, do, um, also, when you tour, uh, how do you tour? Do you tour with the band? Or, or alone? Well, we, we try to. I mean, it, it's kind of hard, you know, with a lot, I mean, you know, at our age, you know, we're all, like, professionals now. We all have, like, like real jobs and stuff, which kind of sucks. But Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, sometimes it's hard to get out. I mean, weekend warrior stuff isn't, isn't too bad. You know, we can do some pretty cool stuff, with, you know, just getting out on the weekends. But it kind of has to be worth our while. I mean, if there's not, you know, <clears throat> there's there's been times when we, we went out and, there really wasn't enough money. You know, we started putting money out of our own pocket for it, and I know you mm. kind of have to pay your dues, but yeah, you know, some stuff was a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. So, so it, sometimes, like for example, I'm going out of town this week. I'm, I'm flying into Denver on Friday, and I'm playing a, a, an event called Skull Fest out in North Platte, Nebraska, and um, uh, I'm I'm just playing the backing tracks for, uh, for that. Okay. And. Uh, because I mean, as a guitar player, you know, I, you know, a big part of my heart lies in instrumental music. So yeah, uh, I'm really just you know kind of sticking with that right now. Cool, cool. Because it said um, in your bio that you've toured um, in, in the Midwest a lot, and then the Nam uh, Metal Jam in L.A. Yeah, uh, we're doing that again uh, this coming year. Uh, it's going to be in Anaheim this year, so it's going to be a little bit closer to like where the NAM convention is actually taking you know taking place and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing that again. That's, that's always that's always a fun show. That's cool. Do you play any other uh, instruments, or is it just guitar for you? Uh, I play other instruments, but nothing nothing live and nothing in other bands. I mean, I'm you know I, I love playing drums, but I kind of suck at you know. I wish I, I wish I played drums better. <laughs> um, they, uh, I mean, I do play a little bit of keyboards, but again, I'm not that great. It's just, I, you know, I'm very much, uh, very much of a, you know, just a kind of a hack with it. I mean, just kind of like laying textures down, stuff like that. Um, play a little bass, you know, here and there. Uh, I can sing a little bit, uh, but mostly, you know, guitar is the main thing. Yeah. How, how long have you been playing guitar for? 32 years now. Oh, well. How many uh, how many guitars do you have, and then like what kinds do you like? Like, what are your favorite guitar brands? What's your favorite guitar? Um, well, I mean, I, I endorse a couple like a couple different companies. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron, I should say I'm endorsed by a couple different companies. Um, I have a signature model through a company called David Thomas McNaught. He's a boutique builder out of North Carolina, and he builds the um, uh, the Xander Dima signature guitar, which is kind of cool. That's um, cool. And you can buy that off of his website or, you know, like any dealer, uh, you know, you can you can get it from there. Um, I also just started working with uh, Brian Moore Guitars again. I worked with them years ago, and I'm uh, endorsing them again. And I, I have a, I'm, I'm part of it, what's called an Artist Ambassador Program. And what that program does is it allows um, – uh, they, they're making me like a, one of their guitars, like they're, you know, kind of special, you know, just uh, sort of like a custom, one-off custom. And um, they're marketing it as like a, a, a Xander Demas artist model. Now it's not like a, it's it's one of their guitars. It just has like little traits and you know characteristics that I like in an instrument. So um, if, so it's not like I have you know two guitars built by two different companies that are competing with each other. They're two different companies, two different types of instruments. Um, but I also play guitars from Sir out of California and also Conklin out of Missouri. Um, and those are my kind of over the top, you know, crazy guitars. Like I have a 26 fret eight string from Conklin. I have a 36 fret on the way from them. It's under construction right now. And then I have, um, uh, got, like, you know, like Sir makes more traditional guitars like Kelly's and, uh, Strat style guitars. And that's what I, when I do the instrumental stuff, I usually play like six strings. So that, that I usually play those guitars, you know, like Brian Moore and Sir are the two guitars I normally play. When I do like a lot of the instrumentals, because my, my instrumentals aren't really like seven string or eight string; they're mostly like six string stuff. So, do you, uh, uh, it just depends on what project I'm in, is what is what I'm, you know, what guitars I use. Yeah. 
Do you compose all your own music? <clears throat> Uh, so I do, I do some, I do some uh, covers here and there, um, but uh, I mean, for the most part, uh, yeah, I do, I do pretty much write all my own stuff. Cool. And now, uh, when you first got into guitar, did you teach yourself or did you take courses? Um, I did a little bit of, uh, pretty much. I, I, I'm gonna have to say a little bit of both. I mean, I taking lessons is a great, it's a great thing to you know, to um, just kind of expand your palate, um, you know, sonically. So you can, you know, you might say, well, I'm going to take this, like, uh, I'm going to take a lesson as a country guitar player. And then you can apply that to, you know, to other uh, to other things that you're doing. And, and it's kind of smart to do that. So, you know, you, um, I'll do that once in a while. I might take a blues lesson here and there. I take a jazz lesson. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think that you kind of, so... Uh, here's, here's, here's another good example. Like there's things that I did back in the '80s when I started playing guitar, and sometimes even the guitar teachers couldn't figure them out. So I'm, I'm trying to figure stuff out. I'm like, oh, I can hear these three notes, and I start playing them, and I'm like, well, I don't know how to play these except for this way. And um, you know, you end up doing something a little bit different, which is kind of cool. I think a lot of guitar players will welcome that because I'll tell you one thing: I am not. I am not the guy that you want if you want me to play something note for note, tone for tone on you know in a band there's a lot of people out there that can do that and i applaud them i just don't have that it's not that i don't have that kind of discipline i would rather at least somebody listen to me and say that sounds like xander not that sounds like george lynch or that sounds yeah. like eddie van halen you know what i mean yeah yeah well i i see that that's a that's a lot of the thing like i i personally like to hear each and every guitarist like when i listen to music i like to hear each and every guitarist's own style not just you know them replicating the same thing over you know what I mean like mm. right and I have no problem with people that can do that I really don't I, I think it's I think it's great oh yeah um, you know you know what I mean I just like I play I'll play a Neil Sean solo from Journey note for note but it's gonna sound like me you know what I mean like the tone of my guitar is gonna sound like me it's, uh, I'm not gonna sit there and try to dial in his exact you know sound because I just you know, I don't think the audience cares. You know, the right. audience, you know, not, like if I, if I, you know, Don't Stop Believing has a very specific solo. If you, if you deviate from that, and people are going to be like, what the hell is he doing? Mm. But, you know, if, if, like, for example, I, if I'm playing it on my seven-string guitar, well, Neil Sean doesn't play a seven-string guitar, but if I'm playing it on that guitar, I'm still going to play the same notes, but it might, it might sound more like, imagine what John Sykes from Whitesnake is playing it. You know what I mean? Um, it's, he's playing the same exact notes. I mean, I like that kind of thing. I like to see people's takes, you know, on certain, uh, you know, on certain tunes. And, um, uh, you know, and I, I believe me, I've gotten my share of arguments with, with other bandmates over that. I mean, there's been some bands I've been in where I'm just like, dude, you got to do it like the way it is on the album. And I'm like, well, go find another guitar player because it's, I'll do it the way it is on the album, but it's, it's going to sound like me, you know what I mean? Um, it just that's just the way I've always been. <laughs> that's cool. It just makes it more personal, and it becomes more of a powerful thing, in my opinion. When yeah. it is like like that, that's cool. Now, uh, over the years, have you met any like uh, musicians that you have admired? Uh, quite a bit. I mean, uh, I've been you know very lucky. I think over the past you know like five years, since I started taking my uh, music career a lot more serious. Um, you know, it was some pretty cool moments. I uh, got to play miles away with uh, Kip Winger on stage uh, acoustically. And, um, you know, I loved, I, I loved Winger in the 80s and 90s and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a shame that they got trashed on Beavis and Butthead. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they suck Butthead, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but I, mean, I, I love them. I mean, a lot, you know, a lot of people don't realize that they are grossly talented. And I yeah. Yeah. They're awesome man, and um, cool, man. Uh, so I got to do that. And, you know, I met him and hung out with him. He was you know a cool guy. Well, a lot of the, um, I think one of the highlights. I was a gigantic Striper fan in the eighties, <clears throat> and uh, we just my band just opened for them in gym here at Pittsburgh, and he had a really really good show. Um, you know, it was a sold out gig. Uh, we sold some merch. Um, nice. You know, met a lot of people. A lot of people were like, "Wow, we, you know, didn't expect to see." You know, a progressive rock band opening up for Striper, but you guys killed it. Yeah. You know, it, it was a really great experience. The only thing that kind of sucked was 
Um, didn't really get to talk to the guys at Striper that night because it was a smaller venue and they, they wanted a lot of privacy and stuff like that. So, okay. you know, I just, that kind of sucked. I wish I could have hung out with them more. Right. Yeah. All right, Xander, we actually got to uh, we got to let you go just because uh, we have another interview very soon, and she's been she's we calling kind of, all night, and when we called her, and <laughs> yeah, because we just can't get crazy. the time right. You know, yeah. she's a uh, different time <laughs> oh, zone, okay. so it's all confusing. So why don't you uh, let the people know where they can find you, and then we're gonna let you go. All right, man. No problem. Uh, you can check me out at xanderdemos.com. X A N D E R D E M O S dot com. Look me up on Facebook. I'm very easy to find. Uh, and thank you guys for having me. Sorry I had to dial in late. I just um, I, I didn't mean to put you guys off there. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Take you care, too. man.